So here's a look at what you get in the kit. Our Radio Flyer kit doesn't include the Radio Flyer tub, the seat, and it also does not include the engine. This is a DIY kit that you build yourself. The kit does require drilling and cutting and the use of some basic hand tools. Keep in mind, go-karts can be very dangerous, so every possible safety measure should be taken while operating them. All right, the first step in mounting the tub is to get these bolt holes set up and drilled on the front of the frame here. And so these bolt holes are four inches apart. So what we'll do here is we'll find center and then from center we'll go two inches this way and two inches that way. And then we'll center them on the, the tube. The tube is a one inch. So we'll go half inch on the tube and then we'll drill those two holes to line up with these two bolt holes. We're using 5 16 bolts for this. Now get these two bolt holes in the back part of the tub lined up with the frame so you can drill holes through the frame for some bolts. Keep in mind this is all prep work before you paint the bare metal pieces. These are brackets that we made just as an example of seat brackets because the kit does not include a seat or seat brackets but this is an example of the way we've done it for one of our carts. Now we'll take this plate and we'll line up that hole and that hole with this one and this one. This is where you'll want to mount this upright steering shaft support. So here's part of our throttle and brake control kit. We have the two rods. The longer rod here we use on the brake side and then the shorter rod we use for the throttle. And you can see the shorter rod is threaded with a hole and the uh, throttle cable end up going through that hole right there. And then we have these L brackets bolted together and a conduit retainer the nuts for the conduit retainer, we're going to use these washers with it, and then this little kit right here, and in this kit we're going to use this return spring, we're going to use this wire stop, we're going to disregard this piece, we're going to disregard the Tinderman nut, and then we're going to use this nut right here. And the way it's going to work is we're going to set this up in the tub, we're going to find a position for it. We have to make sure that it's going to somewhat line up with a throttle pedal. So we're going to use these holes in the throttle pedal and the rod's going to go back from here. So we're going to jog our rod over a little bit and then back under the seat to here. And we have to make sure we're far enough away from the back of the tub so that we have room for the return spring which is going to sit on this side of the L brackets and the conduit retainer which is going to we're going to drill a hole in here and the conduit retainer is going to stick out here. So we don't want this too close. We're not going to have room for a return spring.
Now we're going to install our conduit retainer in this hole. We'll place one quarter 28 nut on each side of the tub and then tighten them together to keep the conduit retainer secure. Now it's time to test fit the throttle rod. We already made a couple bends in the rod so that it'll clear the seat and the seat bracket. The rod goes into the L bracket on this side and then we have our lock collar combination that goes into the pedal and the, the throttle rod slides inside that lock collar and then there's a locking wing nut. And it's a good idea to make a little notch in the rod where the locking wing nut goes to keep it secure. Now we can set this. cable, stick it through here, put this down in there, and your cable goes through here, like that, and then this goes on next. goes on like that, and then you hit your throttle cable like that, and goes like that. Alright, so we got our bracket bolted in. We took this bracket and mocked it up. We ended up cutting the top of this off. It was another about a half inch or three quarter inch taller, but it interfered with our seat a little bit, so we, we cut that off. And then what we did was we positioned it inside here, lined it up where we wanted it. Uh, and then we wanted this connection right here for our, our brake rod. We wanted it outside of, of this bracket here because what we're going to do is we're just going to run the brake rod from here and we're just going to run under the seat and then straight back. So we set this up so that once we get this bracket bolted in place, we should have this positioned to the outside. All right, so now I have the bolts down through the holes and we have this positioned to the outside of the seat bracket like we wanted, which kind of gives us a straight shot down through there to the brake pedal. So we'll have to bend the rod underneath the seat, kind of like how we did on the throttle side. And here's the little kit, the clevis threads on, on there, and then it comes with this pin that's going to go through here, and through here, and then there's a hole right here for the cotter pin. We'll get this mocked up and find out where we need to make our cuts and our bends. Alright, so we have the clevis on the end of the brake rod, and we do final assembly. Slide that on, put it in, we'll pull slack out of it and then tighten this down. There we go. That's about the end of the preparation. Now we disassemble the cart and we grab all the bare metal parts and prep them for paint or, in our case, powder coat. So here are our results after powder coating. And with everything laid out, we're ready for final assembly. Let's start with the rear axle bearings. There's a flange that goes on each side of the bearing. And then the two bolts go through both of the flanges and into the frame with nylon insert lock nuts. Don't tighten the nuts and bolts at this point. These are self-centering bearings. Leave them loose for right now. Secure the two-piece sprocket to the sprocket hub.
With both axle bearings installed in the frame finger tight, you can start feeding the axle in from the right side. First you're going to put on the sprocket hub and then next you'll put on the brake rotor and then just feed the axle through both bearings. Now measure the axle on each side of the frame and set it up so that it's sticking out an even distance on both sides. Once you have it set up centered in the frame, you can now tighten the bearing flange bolts and the set screws in the bearings. Now we install the spindles. There are nylon bushings that go in on each side of each spindle. Just slide the spindle into the frame and then put the large bolt down through the spindle. Snug up the nut on the spindle bolt and make sure the spindle still has free movement. Now you can install spacers on the spindle and the number of spacers that you put on the inside of the wheel versus on the outside of the wheel will just depend on how far you want the wheel sticking out from the frame. The main thing here is that the wheel just doesn't rub on the, the spindle where the tie rod mounts. Once you have the wheel positioned on the spindle where you want it, you can install the nut, tighten it down and then back it off a quarter. If you opted for the nylon wheels like these, you will use the one inch lock collars on each side of the wheel to keep it secured in place on the axle. Don't forget the key. The key locks the, the wheel to the axle. It's a quarter inch key and inch and a quarter long. Now you can install a key in the brake rotor as well. It takes the same size key as the wheels, a quarter inch key, inch and a quarter long. And it's a good idea to put zip ties on each side of that key so it can't wiggle its way out. Next, the caliper can go on. Just bolt that on and it's a good idea to use red Loctite on those bolts. Now you can use some sort of a straight edge to line up the rear axle sprocket to your clutch sprocket or jack shaft sprocket. Once you have the sprockets lined up, you can key the sprocket hub to the axle and then put one inch lock colors on each side of the sprocket hub. That's going to prevent side to side movement. Even though it has set screws, those don't always hold the sprocket hub in place. So the lock colors will help with that. With the engine mounted and our rear axle assembly complete, we're going to mount the radio flyer tub. You can see toward the front of the tub, we've cut an opening for the steering shaft to go through as well. Now it's time to put the pedal assembly plate in the tub and get ready to bolt that down as well. We installed our master cylinder mounting plate and we have the master cylinder on there. We just need to change the angle so that it's appropriate for the brake rod that gets connected to it. Now back to our pedal control plate, we finished installing that along with this vertical steering shaft support. Once the vertical steering shaft support is bolted in, we start working on our seat brackets and we put the throttle rod in as well. Now we're setting up our clevis and brake rod assembly. Once we get that all set up and lined up in there, we can tighten down the master cylinder. With the master cylinder secure, we go ahead and make sure the pedal's all the way back and then install the throttle rod through the lock collar and tighten up our wing nut to keep it in place. If you remember from the mock-up phase, it helps to cut a small notch in the throttle rod where the wing nut uh, seats on the rod. This will help prevent the rod from slipping out of the lock collar. Install the lower steering shaft support. We slide a thin 5-8 spacer onto the steering shaft and then install it from the bottom into the lower steering shaft support. Then the upper steering shaft support goes on and we can bolt that in as well. 
Each tie rod has a heim joint with left hand threads and one with right hand threads, so be aware of that. We install the tie rods onto the spindles first, using an aluminum spacer between the heim joint and the spindle. You can see on the pitman arm we're using aluminum spacers between the heim joints here as well. So you, here you have the pitman arm with that thin 5.8 spacer up against the black plastic lower steering shaft support and this is preventing upward movement of the steering shaft. So to prevent the downward movement of the steering shaft you'll put this lock collar on top of the upper support. Put a little Loctite on the set screw and this will secure your steering shaft in place. With the hub bolted to the steering wheel, you can slide the two on the top of the splined steering shaft. Once you have it locked down on the steering shaft, you can secure it with the castle nut. And don't forget the cotter pin. Don't forget to zip tie the brake line so it does not come into contact with the rear tire. You could always drill a hole through the tub and run the brake line through the tub. Install your seat and you're finished with the build. Make sure your rider is safe. They should wear a helmet. They should be able to reach the pedals. Any rider with long hair should make sure that their hair is tied up so it doesn't reach the, the engine, clutch, chain, or the axle. Go-karting will always be fun as long as safety is taken seriously. Everything shown in this build video are just our suggestions. There are many different ways to build a go-kart, so feel free to put your own twist on the build.